Hello, Steven here, and welcome back. So, before we get started, don't forget if you're new to the channel or haven't had a chance or an opportunity, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below so you can keep notified when new videos come out. Now, when we last left off, we were working on our data flow inside of Apache 95 for Best Buy, and we had finished working on collecting data for our products that we're monitoring and inputting them into both a monitor table and a log table. Now, inside the monitor table here, or yeah, over here for the monitor table, this is just one record per product that we're watching and it just updates the current status of those products. Uh, the real valuable table I think is our products log table. Inside of this table, we're using it to log every pull that we do. And if we take a look up here at the top, currently I'm conducting a pull every five minutes. So from there, we can observe the stats right real quick for each processor. We can see data slowing through them. Uh, we're gonna always see that data because processors are measuring data in five minute intervals. And from here, uh, we can go ahead and right click on the query record if we want, take a look at the status history, and we can see it's processing uh, 950-ish records uh, all the time, constantly during those five minute pulls. So it's got a nice steady flow there, except for some uh, anomalies here from when I've been uh, messing around with it. So it seems to be working just fine. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that data looks like inside of our table then. So let's jump over to uh, dBeaver. And we have a couple things we can do here. So uh, first thing is just remind ourselves what this data looks like. So we'll just query the table real fast. We can see we're logging. I added an ID column because I forgot to add that when I created it. So that uh, increments itself by one every time a new record comes in. And then we have our SKU name and then a bunch of other details as well. The most important details being the online availability and the in-store availability. So these two are probably the most helpful to us, letting us know when that product is there. And then we have our custom timestamp for when we insert the record, which is practically immediately once we pull it from the API. Now, let's go ahead and take and see how much we've collected so far. So we can see over here off the side in DB where it tells us the size of a table is 446 megabytes. And with this columns that we have and data that we're keeping, we can see that is 2.572 million records and change. So we have quite a bit in here. And when you think about it, we're doing five minute pulls every day. So yeah, we're collecting quite a bit, right? We're, and those five minute pulls are giving us pretty good solid visibility over what we're looking at. So we should be able to, you would think, uh, observe when activity changes and when, they be, when products become available and unavailable inside the store or online. Now, I want to, it's not easy inside of a, inside of dBeaver here, trying to get an idea of what this looks like. Uh, we could use the chart function, but it's not very comprehensive. So it won't really paint a picture for us on visualizing this data to see how it can inform us about different things. So what I want to do then is create a, uh, create a CSV and move this over to something that everyone can get a hold of if they want, which is like, Tableau public. So that's where we're going to go take a look at this. Now inside of there, we can't link it to our database, but uh, because the public version won't let us, so we can go ahead and create a CSV file though. And I want to keep the file smaller with all the records. So what I want to do is just grab, we're just going to work with the, uh, I'm going to grab the ID because I always grab IDs. And then we'll go ahead and get insert timestamp, the name of the product. And then we have two case statements to convert the true uh, into the true and false over into a uh, integer one or zero just because I want to work with it that way. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and check out this query. It runs. So in dBeaver, we want to export it. So we'll right click here on the results panel, export data, CSV. Uh, I like to use a bar for my delimiters. And then from here, we'll go ahead and run it. And default settings should give us everything. It's going to put it into a folder and we're going to start. Give that a second or two to run. Hopefully it's only a second. It is a lot of records, so might need a little bit more. There we go. It's starting to process now. Up two million records and there we go. So that gave me a file and I'm going to go ahead now and 
view, change my view here real quick and then take a look at file. So that would be, you're not going to see it right now. Okay. So I have the file. Let's go ahead and jump on over to Tableau public. So here we are in Tableau public. And now we want to go ahead and bring our data in. So we want to, so you can see in Tableau, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's a pretty good visualization tool. I, I like it. It's what I use at work for some stuff, but I also use other things as well. But uh, this is one that everyone should be able to get their hands on in order to do stuff like this. Uh, so let's take a look at text file. We're gonna import the products file there. It's gonna infer some information for us. We can take a look at it by update now and see if it inferred correctly. And we can see the column metadata. So it does have a daytime set up for the insert time. And we have text or strings here. And then we have numeric values there. So we're OK. Let's go ahead and jump over to our sheet. Now, we could say let's just make a quick line graph and then chart everything there. I mean, we could, right? So that'd be like taking an insert time. Oh, we don't want year. We want more down to a granular level. So here we go down to seconds. Uh, we're starting to see our data in there. And then we could say uh, align and variability, and there we go. So what this is showing us right now is not necessarily what we're looking for. Uh, this is just showing us the sum of online availability every second for all those intervals in time. So during this pool right here, this is what it is. Uh, we could convert to say, uh, Max is probably, yeah, there we go. But this isn't helpful either because this is everything. So everything's either zero or one, right, for the values. But we can see we have stuff. There's a little hiccup here because uh, I was messing around with things in NiPy, which caused an interruption in the pool because I crashed NiPy <laughs> with uh, some things I made or changes I made. So that's what we see going on in some areas here. But uh, really what we want to do is uh, add products in here and take a look at them. So... Go ahead and grab name. Oops. Oh, there we go. So it's going to compute that out. And, you know, because we know we have two and a half million records, we want this to run a little bit quicker. That's not what I'm looking for there, but this is actually, it's not, it, it is graphing this out, right? So we're charting them out. We can see for this product right here, the Ryzen 3 3200G, uh, we can see what days it became available on, right? So we know during a period of time here for looks like maybe an hour, a little bit more, it was available. And then same thing over here on this day, this day, bigger window availability here. Uh, so yeah, it looks like from morning to evening it was available. Uh, we could scroll down and look at every single one that way if we wanted to. So that is an option. You can get these slants for when you have missing date periods that don't match up with everything else. Uh, so we have stuff like that. So we can... We're starting to visualize it and see stuff, right? That's one way of doing it. Uh, I kind of want to get everything, though, a little bit easier to read and look at. <clears throat> so let's see here. I want to go down here and change it over to a Gantt. Give it a minute. I want to change my time intervals to day. And basically what I want to get to is say on... A given day was there availability for that day yes or no so we can see here this is actually cleaned up and it's starting to look a lot better for us to look at and get a better idea about our data and what we can see from this data uh, so this is actually kind of nice because we have a pretty good baseline here where we have a television that LED TV here for quantum uh, and it shows from Visio it shows that it had this one has availability and we want to make sure we are on max. And there we go. So we see availability for this product. We had one day where it wasn't available. Uh, and then remember, this is online, right? Yep, we're using the online metric there. So this is the availability online when we pull these devices. And it's basically just saying on this day, there was availability because we have moved our, we're grouping all of our pulls into the day level so we can see was there ever availability on that day. That's all we're saying right now. We could always drop it back down to, because we know we're pulling in minutes, uh, every five minutes, right? So we could drop it down to hour if we wanted to, or minutes, and that would give us a better visibility over what we're looking at if we needed that level of uh, granularity 
of detail, right? So that would be helpful too. Uh, and all these little dashes here, basically these are our days where there's nothing. So it's not being filled in for the day. We can go ahead and scroll through here and it is more responsive now because we are grouping it by the day. So that does help, but we can look at other products that are maybe like more scarce. So we can see here, right? Ryzen 5 3400 G, new processor release. Uh, oh no, not that one. Uh, which one are we looking for here? Let's look at the Ryzen's. And 5800, here we go, 5800X. 50, so availability on this one, really, it hasn't been available at all during the window of day, days that we've been pulling. So uh, our earliest day, I think, is looks like it's, uh, yeah, it looks like it's uh, the 28th when we started pulling this data all the way up to today. So we have data of the 21st. Uh, remember the date time field that we have is in UTC. So you wanna account for that as well. So that's why we're showing stuff in 21st, even though I'm MST. Uh, but yeah, so we can see right here. So this one had availability on this one day. Um, then we have another processor for 50, so two more 15, 5,000 series processors. So we have this one and these two. We also have this one right here, right? So really no availability here online, except for one processor on one day had some availability. And if we wanted to, we could always drill down into that and we could go change our uh, time format and scale it back down to minutes if we wanted to see, like uh, it might be a bad idea to do this, but we'll drop it down to minutes. Probably won't be good. It's gonna be a lot of records and Ooh. Okay, so a lot more. So it's gonna be a little more painful to look at in here. But I think that was the 5600 I think we were looking at, right? Yeah, uh, it's just way slower this way. Give it a minute, there we go. So we can see different levels of scalability. You can see as we move through here and the, the time is changing to our five minute pulls. So we're able to observe those. Uh, we can see areas where it stops. So let's go ahead and turn back to demo because we can work with it quicker this way. All right. And um, then we can go ahead and start scrolling down a little bit more. We can see uh, our TVs are mostly always in stock here especially online we can see the 1660 ti from nvidia had some availability here then no more and then another one and then it has an available since you can see these graphics cards really availability from anyone is uh pretty limited right now for a lot of these although there's one little pattern that i do see here which is just by glancing at it like this which is uh our data that we're collecting is telling us that on january 5th which is a tuesday that was a tuesday they basically had a lot of items that are not ever available flip to being available sometime during that day uh, and as we scroll down we can see it's a pretty common theme here so it looks like a pretty big day when their online store gets availability uh inside the store there too right so as we scroll down here we can see more results we can see items that never go out of stock, apparently. So a lot of TVs, right? Makes sense. They get manufactured quite a bit here. We can see stuff that looks like, um, so just by looking at it real quick, my assumption based off this, without, uh, without us diving too far into it, is we have no data for these periods, but all of a sudden we start collecting data. So remember, the way we're collecting data with NiFi from the API is we're pulling the entire category. So we're pulling these TV categories, which means uh, if there's, we should get all the uh, TV SKUs every time we're pulling them. And then anytime a new product becomes available inside of that category we're already pulling, then we should start seeing new products pop in there as well. So that's what my assumption is here, which is, I think this is what we're seeing here. We have a couple products that have no history at all. So there's the entire time we we're pulling, but we know we were getting TV data from the SKUs that we we're collecting or from the category we we're collecting. And then all of a sudden we show data in the online store uh, for a couple of TVs here, right? So to me, this is telling me that new products were added or products that weren't carried in the store before are being made available in the store. 
for online, right? Not in store because uh, this is the online polls that we're getting. Let's go down a little more. We can see the other, it looks like it's the other way as well, where uh, this should be representing, we were collecting data, we were getting information from the API on this product. And then during all the polls after that, that product was no longer showing up in the categories when we pulled them. So it could be discontinued or maybe they just no longer carry them inside the store, which could be an update to their API and why we see it updated this way. So it's however they handle and work with their API. Uh, we'll scroll down a little more. Yep, we've seen a lot more of the same. We see a lot of products that never get carried. So AMD's uh, new uh, GPU as well. So they're 6,800. So it looks like we have, and these are board partners, it looks like, so XFS. Uh, they don't have any availability for during the detain during the period of time that we were pulling we started pulling this data for right so it, it is working looks like the usage of the api is working as intended and doing exactly what we wanted to see here which is giving us visibility on these products that we are monitoring currently uh, we can also if we want swap out for in store which some products are going to tell different stories and i want to change it back from some to max either zero or one, there we go. The chart is re-updated now and may not see, well, it looks like we might see less items. There might be some items that are never carried in the store uh, and stuff like that. So that looks like the same type of theme here though for when uh, those hard to get items get populated and become available, it looks like they're becoming available on the same date. Uh, the same period of time as well. So it looks like a major shipping occurs during the last one that we observed was on the fifth year for these products that are scarce in their inventory. All right, so this is definitely confirming for us that we are seeing what we wanted to see with this API, which is show us the, gives visibility on your in-store and online using the API to collect this data. And we're collecting it at any interval we wanted. We could. We could go up to hourly if we wanted to, but we'd probably have a uh, less visibility on when products do come in, especially uh, it's not, it wouldn't be too bad on products that have a lot of inventory in them all the time and get restocked and they might get restocked. And then a couple of days later, whatever, they finally dry up their inventory and they get restocked again. We'd see that type of visibility, but when it comes down to items that are moving off their shelves really quick and out of inventory quickly, we wouldn't be able to see them unless we were updating them pretty quickly, right? So five minutes is pretty good for what we're doing right now. And we can take this and do much more of it. So what I want to do is in the start moving forward again with, uh, I really want to see what we can do with the store data, uh, API next and start adding part of the store API to our data flow and looking at and observing the different things we can do there. So uh, I was reading through the API for Best Buy. It looks like we should be able to get information on what stores have what availability. Uh, not just is it availability or is it available, but is it in the store? Uh, and then store locations and stuff like that. So I'll look at it and then uh, put together and get the next video ready for uh, when I want to make another change to this data flow and we can see what we can do there. So I'll catch you in the next one.